What's going on guys? Uh, I've had a few questions about this over center cam tensioning assembly and uh, kind of what it is and how it works. So I wanted to try to make a quick video and uh, see if I can explain this a little better. Uh, now to be fair, it's not really my original idea. Uh, I originally saw this on Mick Strider's grinder. Uh, he kind of showed a real brief and general overview of it. And then uh, John Grimswell kind of adapted that same idea and made one for his grinder and he gave a little bit more of a breakdown of the uh, parts and pieces for it. And then uh, kind of using those two guys uh, as examples and watching those videos on YouTube, uh, I was able to kind of make something uh, myself uh, probably pretty similar uh, to what they both did, uh, although I don't know for sure, uh, but it does work uh, quite well. And uh, for the most part, it's a pretty simple uh, mechanism. So uh, I got this machine handle from McMaster Car just off the shelf. It's a blank handle. Uh, drilled and tapped it for a center pivot as well as for this uh, lock pin or stop pin rather. And uh, this is just a grade 8 bolt that I cut off, threaded in there. And then I made a little phosphor bronze bushing uh, on this side. And then there's one uh, on the other side just to help move it back and forth and prevent wear. And uh, this is a center pivot, so it'll go in like this. And uh, this stop pin set up to span the whole width of the grinder. Uh, the pivot goes through the width of the grinder. <coughs> and then uh, you got a paddle block here uh, that moves back and forth with the pivot and the stop pin. So the pivot will go in that bottom hole, the stop pin spans that middle hole, and then you got a pin through the top there or a socket head screw for the eyelet on this gas spring. So uh, I'm going to kind of float it out in air here as uh, it'll make probably a little bit more sense and uh, it'll take me too long to put it back together on video. But uh, it kind of wedges in like that. So this being your pivot and that being your stop pin, the stop pin just pushes the paddle back and forth. And you know, that'll move this up and down, back and forth. I've kind of showed that in some other videos. And uh, the travel is limited by a pre-cut arc in the side of the grinder body. I think it's about 120 degrees. So there's the center pivot hole. There's the arc that's cut in there for the stop pin to travel. Uh, same on both sides. Uh, I designed it this way so that I could put that handle on one side or the other, depending on personal preference. Uh, it's kind of like an ambidextrous uh, design. Uh, I think I actually prefer it right now on the motor side. There's less things uh, to interfere with and to hit your knuckles on. Although it would work on the other side, maybe with a slight change of angle. But uh, hopefully that kind of illuminates you know what some of you guys have some questions on and uh, you know gives you a little bit better idea of how that works and then you know the spring obviously can travel a couple inches in and out and uh, that's where your tension is ultimately uh, gained from and uh, the way this locks into place uh, it just goes over center so gravity kind of pushes it down and uh, keeps it from falling back on you, uh, if that makes sense. And uh, you, you can kind of see how everything's angled there. And uh, I guess uh, maybe I'll put this back together and tie in another clip, just so uh, that kind of makes sense. So uh, stand by, I'll pause the video here. All right, guys, we got everything back together uh, just to kind of show you again how this works you got the center pivot screw it into this handle stop pin offset from that going through the paddle uh, both the pivot and the stop pin go all the way through the paddle block there and you can kind of see it pushes that back and forth over that arc of travel and uh, you can kind of see those arcs on either side there And then uh, because it travels past center, 
Uh, that's why, you know, I can have compression on the spring and not be pushing this handle back. You know, if the handle's only to about right there, it would push back down. So that's about center. That's over center. You know, it locks right in on the uh, extreme of that arc. So uh, hopefully that kind of clears some things up, uh, gives you guys an idea how that works. Uh, obviously, if we had a belt on here, you know, the spring would be uh, providing the tension. But uh, you can kind of see the travel of this arm. You know, you got at least a good couple inches. And it probably doesn't even take that much. You know, if I even shorten this up, it'd probably still work. But uh, plenty of travel for the stroke. You don't want to go any farther than the stroke of that spring, obviously. But uh, that's how that works. And a quick tip uh, before I cut the video off. Uh, if you guys use any kind of a gas spring on your grinder, whether it's an over center cam or, uh, you know, just set up to push down on a handle. Always make sure you put your rod underneath the cylinder. Uh, if you flip it around the other way where the rod's on top of the cylinder, then you start getting dirt and grease and everything building up on that seal right there and gets down into the cylinder and really screws things up and dramatically shortens the life of your spring. Uh, this way, you know, at least you got gravity working on your side. It's kind of covered, but not really. But, uh, you know, gravity and vibrations will hopefully keep that clean enough. It'll last a lot longer. Uh, you know, these things do wear. They do fail. Uh, expect to replace them eventually. But uh, much quicker uh, if you got it flipped around upside down. Uh, this way it'll last a lot better. So uh, hopefully this helped, guys. And uh, if you have any more questions, by all means, uh, leave them below or ask me on the forums. And uh, I'll see what I can do. Thanks.